Let's go load up a topic for the next video. Hang on, I gotta take this. Hello? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You are lying, good sir. Well, I was going to be doing a video on Bellatro this week, but I guess I can push it back. And I say this purely as a joke. Not the rescheduling, though. Bellatro's coming next week. Due to being all, I'm in for a slow week this week, and there's nothing really to talk about. And then, BAM! Supergiant releases Hades 2 in early access. I do not mind this in the slightest, because I've been looking forward to this game since it was announced over a year ago. And it's gonna be a first for Supergiant in the sense of, they never do sequels. So this should be interesting, to say the least. The basic setup. Taking place an undetermined amount of time following the first game, Hades 2 follows Melinaway, witch in training and daughter of Hades Persephone and sister of Zagreus. She seeks to slay the newly resurrected Kronos, Titan of Time, after he conquers the underworld, imprisons the other Chthonic gods, and amasses an army to assault Mount Olympus. With the aid of the witch Hecate, the guidance of the Sisters of Fate, and the tactical advice of Odysseus, Melinaway sets off to fight her way deeper into the underworld to confront the Titan of Time. Immediately, I can tell that they are going for a darker story because that's quite a leap from relatively low-stakes family drama of the Greek mythology variety to the literal fate of the world hangs in the balance. And the best place to see that is in the character designs. While they are still incredibly appealing, you get a greater focus on darker and less saturated colors. They're wearing more armor this time around to hammer home the stakes. Or, in the case of Aphrodite, carrying around just a shield and spear, because while one of her domains is war, she still abides by the previous game's strategically placed bits of hair and jewelry concept. That one bit aside, the Olympians look a bit older and more tired. Like they've been fighting a war. Which makes a lot of sense, because that's what they've been doing. But that's not all that's there. We also have new characters joining us, like Apollo, the god who gifts random people on the internet with the gift of prophecy, and the sun, I guess. Hestia, the goddess of hearth, home, and fire, who looks like what a warm hug feels like. A very nice contrast to Supergiant's stern and cold take on Demeter. And Hephaestus, the god of the forge, who looks great for a guy that got yeeted off the top of a mountain. You also meet the other children of Nyx as well, such as Nemesis, the goddess of retribution, Moros, the incarnate of doom, and Eris, the goddess of strife. One thing I do like about Nemesis and Eris is that they were wielders of the staging blade and animate rail for the first game, and you could unlock those aspects for different effects. In the time between then and Hades 2, they got those weapons back and you see them wielding them in-game, and I just think that's neat. While I will admit that there is a lot of new art in here, there are specific instances where you can tell, oh, wait, this is still in development and it's still early access, so there's gonna be some unfinished stuff. The best example is Charon not having a new portrait despite having a character model from the look of it. I'm also not going to be going into all of it or the story so far outside of the opening area because it's all spoiler-tastic and Hades 2 is going to be in early access for a while if the last entry was anything to go by. So outside of that, I'm done talking about story stuff and I'm just going to move on to the more general design and game thoughts. Plus it's super giant. We all know that they're going to cook on a narrative front. Now it's time for the video game part of this video game! The same underlying structure from the original Hades is still in Hades 2. You start in the hub, talking to characters, events, and narrative. You go out, you do a run, you die, you come back, you talk, you do upgrades, do a run, die, you live, you die, you live again, repeat. Since the main payoff for progression is advancing the story, the loop still feels great. I do like how they try to differentiate between Zagreus and Melinaway in a lot of small ways that matter. When Melinaway loses all her health, she casts a spell that sends her all the way back to the crossroads to regroup for the following night's attempt. Whereas in OG Hades, Zagreus just straight up dies and gets sent back to the house of Hades. Melinaway is trying to descend into the depths of the underworld to find Kronos, whereas Zagreus was attempting to ascend to the surface to find answers about Persephone's disappearance. And that's where a lot of the similarities end. A drastically different way is how they both approach their challenges. While they both get a lot of their powers from the boons and blessings of the gods of Olympus, Zagreus was primarily trained in martial combat, which makes sense owing to him being trained by Achilles. 
Melinoe is being trained by Hecate, the goddess of magic, crossroads, witchcraft, and necromancy. But this is all shortened to her epitaph, the Witch of the Crossroads. The biggest indication of this is the introduction of the Omega attacks and the changes to the cast ability. Omega attacks are new attacks you get by holding any of the attack buttons, and they change their properties depending on the weapon. Melinoe's cast is an area of effect ring that ensnares all enemies caught in it and can be changed to detonate and to damage enemies in that area, which itself is also an Omega attack. And this can be augmented by boons in the ways that you would expect, like Demeter's turning it into a cyclone that freezes enemies, Zeus is turning it into an AoE lightning storm, Poseidon's detonates instantly and knocks enemies away, you get the idea. These attacks are all tied to a mana bar that Mel gets that refills in between encounters, which I feel like is Supergiant's way of telling us to run wild with it. We also have a smattering of new weapons that tie into this. You start with a short range witch's staff. It fires two different types of projectiles. Main Omega attacks is massive line of damage. Special Omega is a slow moving AoE blast. All standard stuff so far. Then we get into the more unique weapons, like the Umbra Flames, which are a pair of torches that let you fly around, shoot ghost looking fireballs, and surround yourself with fire. The Sister Blades, a dagger and sickle combo that lets you move around at ridiculous speeds, carving up your enemies and throwing knives. A weird, throwable skull I haven't gotten my hands on yet. And of course, my personal favorite of these weapons, the Moonstone Axe. It's a big, fuck-off axe that can kill most enemies in 1-2 to two hits at the cost of lower attack speed, but it also lets you block attacks with the special and sends out a massive counter shockwave and oh my god, it's so fucking cool! Zagreus lacked the weapon of the big fuck-off variety in his baseline arsenal, so this is a welcome change of pace. Plus, I love the sprinting animation, where it looks like Melinoe is dragging it along the ground because of how heavy it is, that's rad. We also got new stuff on top of the weapons. New boons for all of the returning gods, and new boons for new gods. Apollo focuses on blinding enemies and expanding the area of effect on Melinoe's attacks. Hephaestus improves your weapons with blast effects, and Hestia lets you light things on fire. And those are all I encountered in the first area of Erebus. And while dual boons are in the game based on what I've played, I haven't found any legendary boons yet. I don't think they've been added. We also have resource gathering for new activities. Gardening to get plants for concoctions, a pickaxe for mining metals and minerals for weapons, ashes to unlock arcana cards that give you bonus effects depending on how you mix and match them, and a massive cauldron which serves as the main place to upgrade your camp at the crossroads that uses those various plants and other resources for ingredients. It's all very thematically appropriate. While it sounds like it's just Hades with extra stuff, Hades 2 is also swinging for the fences in a lot of interesting ways. But I'm trying to not spoil anything because it's all stuff that if you're watching this video and are interested in, you'll want to go in completely fresh. Based on the six hours and handful of runs I've done, it should be enough to do what a good sequel does best, which is to take what already worked and refine it to its purest form. Which is saying something, considering that Supergiant knocked it out of the park the first time. I'm definitely keeping more tabs on this because as a roguelike enjoyer, of course I am. I'm interested in seeing where this wild ride goes. And that will be it for this week's video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share it around, all that stuff, it would be deeply appreciated. Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Return and rest. And try again, Melinoid.